Okay, and then following on from the previous problem about rotation, a rotating wheel, we said, what kind of force would you have to apply? And you might imagine just taking a rod or your hand even really, and pressing it against the edge of the wheel so that a friction force, find the force to stop the wheel. And of course, you need some um, actual physical conditions here. So from last time, we had that omega was about 6 radians per second. And let's say then you're going to stop the wheel, so it's going to be 0 radians per second in 10 seconds. So that means that you have an alpha of delta omega over delta t, which is, uh, let's see, 6 radians per second minus 0 radians per second over 10 seconds, which is 0 0.6 radians per second squared. OK, so that's the angular acceleration. Now. The next thing we need, though, is we know that the torque that you apply to something to get it to stop spinning or start spinning is I alpha. So now we know that alpha is 0 0.6 radians per second squared. What's I? For a wheel, all the mass is at the edge. E, D, G, there we go, is at the edge. And so when you go to sum all of the little pieces of mass and their distance squared from the center of rotation, you just get the whole mass of the wheel, R squared. OK, and what about the torque? Well, we said that torque is R cross F, and that's the F that we're trying to find. Now notice that this is where the torque is applied and we applied it to the edge. Sorry, where the force is applied. OK, so putting that all together then, we have that R times F is equal to M R squared alpha. So you can cross out one of the factors of R from both sides, and you get that the force you have to apply is M R alpha. You'll notice actually that it's interesting that this is A, the actual linear acceleration um, at the edge at a distance r from the center. So ma is indeed a force. And we plugged in numbers here for m and for r, used our alpha, and found um, the force in newtons. The other thing that you can ask as sort of a little postscript was, what was the total angle during that time. And because it's slowing down the whole time, you have to think about that a little bit. Um, but it's not too hard. Um, what we do know is we know the initial speed and the final speed. And we know the acceleration. What we don't know is, oh, and we do know the time, actually. So we can pretty much pick any one of these expressions that we want. You could pick this one, that the total theta traveled is omega naught, which was the 6 radians per second, times the 10 seconds, plus 1 half alpha t squared. Um, you might also pick the one that says that, um, let's see, delta theta, uh, let's see, delta theta over t is omega plus omega naught all over 2. That's a particularly simple one. Let's try that one. So we have 6 radians per second plus 0 all over 2 times 10 seconds is, let's see, oh, not multiplied, times 10 seconds. There we go. I was just checking the units there. We need these seconds to go away. And we're left with that the total angular displacement 
well, not displacement, but the total angular travel is um, 6 times 10 is 60, divided by 2 is about 30 radians. If you want to figure out how many revolutions that is, you could do 30 radians and divide that by about 6, or 2 pi, radians per revolution. How many revolutions was it? It was about 5. Cool. Cool problem.